DRFX. If you've grabbed any third party titles, effects, transitions for DaVinci Resolve in over the last year, odds are the process was made much easier because of DRFX files. In this video, I'm going to talk about what they are, why they're so cool, um, their use cases, and I'm going to walk through how you can create your own to organize or share or even sell your own presets for DaVinci Resolve. Now, as I talked about in a previous video, a lot of the really cool fusion macros and presets, even that you use on the edit page in DaVinci Resolve are really just text documents. Everything in the Fusion page can be saved as plain text. And if you package that up, uh, you can create a dot setting file that then tells Resolve uh, to rebuild that composition. And then that is what you have access to here on the edit page. DRFX files go way beyond that. Let me demonstrate. Here I have a blank timeline and I just have a still um, of da DaVinci Resolve here. But here in my finder, you see I pulled up and here I have a DRFX file. This is the installer for one of my new products, 3D Screen Pro. And if you were to purchase this product, you would get this DRFX file and all you or anyone has to do when they have one of these is just double click. And as long as you are in Resolve 17.2 or newer, it'll give you this pop-up, do you want to install? You can click install, maybe give it a second or two to think about it. But then now, because I just installed it, if I come to effects, Sterling Supply Company, uh, in my effects library, I have a new subfolder here, master 3D screen, I can click that. And all these presets were just imported. And I will now have access to these in any future project I make. And I can just take one of these. And if I just drag that onto this clip, I can play through and wow, I have this really amazing 3D effect that's available now. But hey, that's not what this video is about. But the reason we are able to have 25 different presets now loaded into Resolve in a few seconds is because of DRFX files. But it's already time for our first little quick bonus tip. If you would rather read a plain text document instead of watching this video, I have good news. If you come up to help documentation developer, just click that. It will open a window in your inspector uh, with a few different folders here. If you click fusion templates and then read me, hey, you will have this really nifty text document that outlines different fusion effects and how you can get them into the edit page, including DRFX files. All of the cool stuff we're going to talk about in this video is also here. Uh, if you want to reference or search through in different ways, it's super helpful. There are still a few things I have to reference every once in a while in here, a good place to know. And also uh, worth knowing generally where this documentation is if you want to poke around uh, with any other more advanced stuff like scripting. This document also talks about the anim curves modifier, but that that is its own video also. But that video, hey, is actually coming. I've said it's coming for a while. It's coming. But back to DRFX files themselves. Check this out. This is really cool. Uh, if I have this DRFX that I just installed, um, if I click that, I can go in and actually change this suffix. Now on Windows and Mac, you might have to do this a few different ways. Uh, even on Windows, I had to go in and change the settings. So all my files, it always shows the suffix in the name, but that will be up to the individual user. But because I can see this dot DRFX, I can go in. And if I actually clear out that DRFX and just type in zip, I will click away. It'll give me a little warning because, hey, I'm doing something weird. If I click OK, it changes that to just a zip file. And if I open that zip file and extract that to that same location, I can go in and see, yeah, now it has a normal folder. I can click in that and I just have an edit folder, an effects folder, and then that Sterling Supply Company subfolder, and then another subfolder that we saw for 3D Screen Pro. I finally open that and hey, we have all of those presets and not just those presets, but you can see alongside of those, we also have the custom thumbnail we got access to in the edit page. So if you ever want to crack open a DRFX, just change that suffix, you're good to go. But we also just touched on a lot of super important stuff there, especially if you want to make your own DRFX file to share or sell, you sort of need to start reverse engineering from here. And there's a few really important things you need to keep in mind. You'll notice that alongside when I still had that DRFX file, I had this main edit folder. When I'm packaging up an effect uh, to share or sell, I always start with just a plain folder that's just called edit. This is essential. Just edit, no extra spaces or numbers because the location where Resolve will drop this DRFX is in a very specific place in the folder structure. So you just need a plain folder 
called edit. And then inside that, I have effects, but here you can also have different options. You can have a folder for effects, generators, titles, and transitions. And if we look back in Resolve, underneath these toolbox, we have those same options, transitions, titles, generators, and effects. So you can have a DRFX file with all four of those folders here with presets in each of those. And if you just install that one DRFX, it will drop all of those presets in the appropriate folder. So Resolve recognizes them and uses them in the correct way. Yes, presets sometimes have to be built a little differently for how you want to use them. But if you drag a preset that is meant to be in effect into the generators folder, it won't work. But from here, stuff starts getting uh, pretty exciting because inside effects, I have a different folder, Sterling Supply Company. And as we saw here, when I opened up effects, uh, along with some others I've bought here, we also have Sterling Supply Company, especially if you are making lots of presets or if you're making your own, but just want a further organization. Instead of dropping everything in this root effects folder, which you can see I have lots of stuff like test projects and stuff in here, it can get messy really quickly. But if you drop it in a subfolder, that cleans things up so nicely. And you can see here for my products, I even have an additional folder. So 3D Screen Pro, you have all these that we just dropped in. So back in our folder structure, Sterling Supply Company, 3D Screen Pro, and then you have all of these effects. Now, let's talk about these custom thumbnails. Not only is this super cool, uh, for some things, it's gonna be almost essential. If we look back at 3D Screen Pro, for an example, you see all these custom thumbnails do a really good job of communicating specifically what that effect does. The certain angle of the clip on in an image plane, and then the camera movement, so you can get an idea. You can always scrub over like I am here, or you can just get a quick idea from the thumbnail and then drop it on and you're good to go. And if you want a custom thumbnail, all you need to know is that you need to have a PNG file with the exact same name as each individual effects dot setting file. So here you have 3D screen one, 3D screen one, but there are two different kinds of files. So Resolve recognizes them and then pulls them in. Now these thumbnails, are very small and Resolve will scale down, but especially if you're sharing these files and especially, especially if you have lots of different presets, there's no reason to have these be larger than they need to be. I have this saved in my little utility to resize pictures. Uh, but they recommend a resolution of 104 pixels by 58 pixels. And that is super uh, important to keep in mind because if you are then creating these thumbnails, you don't want to go too detailed. You don't want a lot of like fine information or text. You see, I keep these very bold, big, bold arrows and that works pretty well. And if you do have text, usually I keep it only to a word or two and really scale that up in frame so that when it gets down to that low, low resolution, uh, it works great. If I just go uh, back to my this main Sterling Supply Company folder and scroll down, you see some of my more free presets. Yeah, I just have mostly one big chunky uh, piece of text. And then I have this circle from Proto uh, in the background to sort of recognize them all as my effects. There's one more pretty giant, super useful feature of DRFX, but I want to do a little bit of an aside uh, to talk about where these DRFX files go and if necessary, how to remove them. I installed this 3D Screen Pro DRFX earlier, but if we hop over to the Fusion page, a lot of people might not know this in general, but if I come to effects, I have templates, and if I open edit, you have those same four folders and you can browse any of the presets from those. For instance, if I come to generators, open that up, go to Sterling Supply Company and I scroll down, I can just drag in a proto, another of my free presets. And here, this is an edit page effect, but I can drag it right to my node viewer in Fusion, open it up, get crazy with it, dive in, change anything you want, modifier, learn from it, it's here. But if I come back to just edit, and I come up to these three dots, I can go to show folder. And that will open up a browser window. And hey, we have those same four folders earlier. But in our main search bar here, if I just go back one folder to templates, you see we have a folder for use on the edit page or the fusion page. But now underneath that, we have a lot of DRFX files. And these are all of the DRFX files that are loaded in my version of Resolve. When you open or launch a DRFX file, all it's really doing is copying that entire DRFX file to this location. And then Resolve is able to look inside because it's just a zip file, read all those presets, look at those thumbnails and more. So in our example, if I didn't want this 3D Screen Pro anymore, I could take that just delete it, uh, go back to Resolve. I would likely have to restart Resolve, but then this preset would be entirely wiped from my system. Actually, let's check, because it looked like it did a little thing. Open up Strong Supply Company. Yeah, 3D Screen Pro is now gone. But hey, I could always hop back. In this instance, I would have to go back and change that zip to DRFX. Yes. Double click that again. It'll ask me, hey, 
Do you want to install it? Again, it won't say again, but hey, install that and we're back up and running. Open it back up, boom, 3D Screen Pro. All right, so now we have the last major feature of DRFX files and it is very, very cool, but it might get a little bit more technical than we've got so far. I'm gonna to try to demonstrate smoothly. Here, I've rigged up a simple animation in After Effects where we have a Resolve logo that slides on screen, holds, and then animates back out. Now, this is animated with anim curves, but again, that's not what this video is about. Uh, we have brought this logo into our scene with a loader node. This is not a logo that was in our media pool and we dragged in. That would function a little differently. We're using a loader node. So uh, in that loader node, I am pointing to the specific location on my hard drive where that file exists. So as this stands right now, if I were to package this up, even package it in a DRFX and send it to someone else, uh, if they were to use this file, uh, this is pointing to my hard drive where this file is. It wouldn't work for them. It would go offline. It'd be a mess. Now, what am I about to do next? You could do in a few different orders. I'm going to do it in a way that I think makes sense. I'm going to go into this loader node. And you see, I have the final uh, file name here, resolvelogo.png. And everything before that, I'm actually going to delete. And I'm going to type in setting with a capital S colon. And when I click off, uh, that will go red. You see that actually goes offline, but I am doing this at the very end of my scene right before I package it up, right? So now I'm going to select these four nodes, right click, make a macro. I can just name this like resolve logo. I'm not going to add any custom controls. I don't need those, but I'm coming to file, save as, or save as group. And I'm going to navigate to a specific folder I've set up. I will click save and then I can close. And now if I go to that folder, you see, we have that resolve logo setting. But then, hey, I also have that Resolve Logo PNG. This is not where that loader was originally looking to. I have a fresh copy of it here. And this uh, is important, at least for now. There is a small issue, maybe a bug, that I've been running into. Uh, I didn't run into it for a long time. It sort of kicked up around 18 coming out. So I hope it gets taken care of. I'm going to walk through it. If it's something you run into, this is how you'll get around it. So I created that setting file, right? I'm going to hop into a fresh Fusion composition. And if I drag that setting file in, uh, that resolve logo will still be offline. But there's nothing wrong here. We just need to sort of like shake it a little bit. If I just go into that file name, I'm going to go delete that last G on PNG and then type that back in. That'll give us this little prompt. Do you want to reset these options? Click yes. Then that will bring in that logo. But importantly, it is looking to the logo that is stored directly next to the setting file, wherever that setting file goes. So now I believe we should be able to, uh, I'm gonna close this group, copy this whole back, and I'm actually going to go to that setting file, open that in this little text window, select all of that, paste in that fixed copy, and then now if I test that, drag that in, boom, that little fix is ironed out. So now if we open that up and check, uh, this is not looking to a specific point on my hard drive, but rather a relative point. It's saying, okay, look where the dot setting file for the whole preset is stored. And in that folder, look for this logo. So if we were to package this up in a DRFX file and send it anywhere else in the world, if Resolve opened that DRFX, got to this specific effect in that DRFX, it would look at where the setting file is located inside the DRFX. And beside that would be this logo. This is the main system that I showed off when I released a previous preset using over a hundred different website and social media logos in a pop-up animated lower third. But you can use this in so many different ways. You can include FBX messages for entire 3D scenes or even uh, LUTs for color grading. If you have a logo or a specific graphic, if you're creating like a YouTube pop-up animation and you want the YouTube YouTube logo included, you can just have a file for that instead of trying to recreate a graphic using like masks or something native in Fusion. It can save a lot of time for sure. And it opens up so much more that you can do with presets that you intend to share. Wow. And at least as it stands right now, that is the deal with DRFX files. I hope this was helpful. I hope you uh, create your own DRFX and fusion effects in general and share them all over the place. It's an amazing little ecosystem that's being built. It's very cool. Jump in, get involved. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.